Hey folks, today we have the Skyloon GK61 series RGB USB Bluetooth keyboard. And you can see this is a really nice mechanical keyboard. Very compact, gives you a lot of space on the desktop. And if you have it in wireless mode, it's even better. Now I have this in wired mode right now because you need to have it in wired mode to program it with the driver software, okay? Now let's talk about the keyboard itself. The keyboard comes in a plastic casing. It's not a metallic casing, and to a certain extent, I think that's better because um, it doesn't sound as hollow sometimes on keyboards. If you bottom out on a metallic on a metallic casing, you can hear it kind of echo. Now that doesn't mean this feels low quality. In fact, you can see how thick this plastic is. It has great weight to it, and part of that is because it has a built-in battery. So you can see here. If I turn this light, if I turn the lighting effects off and I hit the FN key, all right, the space bar turns on and turns off the Bluetooth functionality. And you can switch between three different devices. So you can see when I hit the FN, the Z, X, and the C keys, I can switch between three different device channels and three different Bluetooth receivers, okay? Now you also saw the W key light up and this allows me to select the different layers. So there's the default layer, which is on Q. I'm currently on layer one, but you have two and three, okay? What the layers allow you to do is it allows you to customize these keys so that you have the behavior that you want. And we'll talk about why you will need to do that, okay? Now, because I'm a software engineer, um, I had to remap these keys and my one, I have a couple criticisms of this keyboard. My main criticism after using it for several days now is that it is one, it is one key short from greatness. It is in every respect a really great keyboard to use, really comfortable, sounds great, feels great when you're typing, and you can type fast on it. It's just missing one key, and we'll talk about it. Now look, if you see here, right, if you're a programmer like me, you need this backtick key, okay? Now the backtick key is still okay because when we go into layer one mapping in the software, what we can do is we can change the default functionality of the escape key to be backtick, okay? That means that if you want the tilde, for example, you would do shift backtick, right? Now here's the problem. The escape key, the escape key is okay because we can remap that so that the secondary function is fn escape, okay? The problem is with this key here, the up arrow. All right, so why is this a problem? Because if you type slash and question mark all the time, and because you're a software engineer, the problem is that you can't really remap that. So if you want to have arrow keys left, down, and right here, that's perfectly fine because you can remap it like I have in layer one by mapping these primarily as the arrow keys, okay? The problem is that you can't really have a dedicated up arrow key in this cluster here, you have to put it somewhere else to have a dedicated up arrow key. So what this means is that if you're navigating your code, you're navigating text files, whatever you're doing, if you want to hit up, you always have to hit FN and then uh, this, this arrow key here to actually go up. Now, of course, if you want these to, if you don't care about the slash with question mark and you rarely use those, uh, that's perfectly fine. Then you remap these primarily as your arrow keys and then you can FN to access those keys or FN shift to access those keys. But for me, that's just a little bit too awkward. I really, I use these keys too much to not have it mapped that way. And that's it. It's literally, it is literally one key short from greatness because if there was a way to map a dedicated up arrow key, this would be the perfect keyboard, okay? Now we're gonna take a look in the software how this works because you will need the you will need to number one plug it in, and you will need to you will need to download the driver software if you want to program the different layers. If you don't want to program the different layers, you can just plug it in and you're ready to go. Or you can turn on the Bluetooth functionality and hook it up to your Bluetooth capable uh, device, laptop, um, Chromebook, whatever the case may be. Now, I will say this, the battery life on this, if you're curious, the battery life is really so-so. Uh, you will get, with the lights off, I got about one and a half days of constant usage. So I'm working from home. I use my laptop eight to 10 hours a day. 
and I can tell you I got about a day and a half before the battery conked out. Okay, that's pretty good. You can charge it overnight and it'll be ready to go, but it's not going to be ready for you for a whole week. You will have to recharge it uh, every, day, every day or every other day, depending on how heavy you use it. And if you have the lighting effects on, it might wear faster, okay? Now, to get the driver software, you have to go through this really tiny manual, okay? This, you can see here, the text in this manual is really tiny, and this is it. This is it. You have to read it very carefully if you wanna understand how to use this keyboard. You're not going to get the most out of this keyboard if you don't read this software, this software manual, okay? Now, all the ways over here on the very tiny bottom here, there's a link to download the drivers, okay? And we'll take a look at, you know, again, why I docked one star for this keyboard. Um, you know, one star I'm docking because it's one key short from being absolutely perfect. But we'll take a look at some of the challenges of trying to get this driver software, quite frankly, um, so that you can do the mapping of the keys in the different layers. All right, folks. So you can see when you go to the link that's included on the instruction booklet, uh, one of the big problems is it's actually all in Chinese. So it's really not going to be easy for you to get these drivers. There's no English translation of this. But, but what you'll want to do is over here where it says uh, this drop down here, you want to find GK6X Plus because that's the series of the keyboard that we have here. Okay. And of course, then these are just the driver versions. You click the red button to download it. Um, and you can install it on your Windows 10 device. Um, I do not see, there doesn't look like there's any compatibility with Mac OS, so that might be a challenge, but you have, of course, all your Windows devices covered, okay? Now, when you download the software and you connect your laptop via USB, again, it has to be connected via USB for this to work, you'll see you have the ability to select a a layer. The default layer is this standard layer, and in the standard layer, you can't reprogram the keys. However, if, if you select layer one, you can select any of these keys, for example, in this case, escape key, and reprogram it with a different function. So if I hover over it, you can see I have my escape key programmed as a default as the back tick because I use the back tick all the time, uh, whereas I don't use the escape key that much, okay? Now, you can see the other key I've remapped is this key here. So rather than the default, rather than the, in this layer, layer one, it is programmed as the up arrow. What I've done is that I've removed the configuration and left it as the default slash key. And now that means to get the up arrow, I have to FN and hit this key to get the up arrow. So you can see it's quite, it can be challenging to find the right mapping. And as I said, this is the one key that's, it needs just one more key that could be a dedicated up arrow. And if it had that one more key that could be a dedicated up arrow, I think this would be a great keyboard uh, because it sounds great, it looks great. The wireless functionality is great. Um, the link to the website, you know, this, the instructions are a little bit iffy. The software, you know, once you figure out what you're doing within the software, it's not that difficult. You can figure it out. You can remap the keys. You can build macros. Um, you can customize the lighting if you want, right? So you have full control over what this keyboard looks like, how it behaves, and really customize it to suit how you want to use the keyboard, okay? Now, you have three layers that you can program on the device itself. So these are device layers, meaning that you don't have to plug it in to do anything. Um, you program it and that's it. But if you want to be able to, if you want to be able to do lighting effects, you wanna do spectral cycles, rebuild these things and program additional macros and so on, then you need to use driver mode. And for driver mode, unfortunately, uh, you have to be plugged in. You can't use the wireless for driver mode and it doesn't stay with the device. Whereas these settings, layer one, two, and three are on board on the device, okay? Now let's take a look at how this keyboard sounds. I have a typing test pulled up and I'm just gonna go through this typing test so you can hear how it sounds.
So that was about 95 words per minute. I think it sounds great. Overall, I would say that this keyboard is really fantastic. I've loved using it. Um, I normally use a full-size Corsair keyboard. I've been using this for about a week just to get a really good feel for it. And I really like it. I really like the way this keyboard feels. It's great for everyday use. Um, it's great when it's in wireless mode because there's really no signal lag, no delay from what you would experience in wired mode. But I think that if you're like me, you're going to have a you're going to have a hard time, a bit of a challenge, trying to figure out the right way to remap these these, these keys. And you might be able to get it to work for you. You might be able to live with having the up arrow on an FN key. You might be able to live otherwise if you flip it around with the slash key um, on the FN. So I think you really have to think about what you know before you drop the money for this keyboard think about what you can live with, right? Think about if you can live with hitting FN to navigate around the text documents that you navigate around. If you're primarily getting this for gaming, I think this is a great keyboard. If you're getting this for productivity work, think about it.